This video, we're going for the Super Bowl, so let's see if we get it done. We're going to a little gameplay for you. I'm in the dollar defense out of Kansas City Playbook, and I am in the uh, actually Bears offense. I'm kind of messing around with Bears a little bit, see if I can uh, get it to work properly. I kind of like auto blend a tight a little bit more than I was auto blend a trip. So, um, you know, we'll kind of mess around with tight slots. Now that we have Hot Rod Master, it kind of changes literally everything about uh, the game because there's so much more that you can do uh, with Hot Rod Master than without it. So uh, we'll be seeing how that goes. I got my man, CJ Stroud. So we'll see how he does. And we're starting out a little pre-lit X factors. Why wouldn't you have that? And my man, LLT, out here just running the ball, kind of running a little off-meta offense, kind of doing a bunch of little things uh, differently than most people do. Actually, I messed up. Let me do that. Messed my adjustments up. But we still scream. Terrible route combination. Gonna try to hit the tight end. Hits me with the spot. As I said, it was one of the best route combos I've ever seen. I don't know how he got that out. Lamar Jackson out here just dotting me up, but it's what it is. So we'll see if we can get a stop here. One of the things I like doing against formations like that are more spread out, uh, and I talked about this in a previous video, but one of the things I like to do a lot more against people that are running these kind of like spread out formations is I really like to use default curl flats. And the reason why I like to use these default curl flats is because they will reroute the receivers, so they will kind of disrupt the timing of the offense. And what we're banking on is the fact that we can get the pressure in before they're able to get the ball out. Now, when they go to something like this, you kind of got a baseline, but we're not going to. We're going to leave it as is. Just kind of see how this plays. Going to take that crosser, and we're able to get that pressure. I think Rob Gronkowski is the best blitzing linebacker in the game. You want to have a linebacker there with Lurk Artist. So abilities real quick while we're sitting here at the menu. I got Ryan Neal on the right. He's got deep out zone and mid zone KO. I've got my man Bo Jackson on the left. He's got deep out zone and mid zone KO. And then Winfield has deep end zone KO. So that's kind of like the system that I'm running uh, offense or defensively. Let's see if I can. So kind of fourth and eight. Interesting little situation. He should have the corner. He goes to that. Throws right at Randy Moss. <sighs> then we drop a pick. I've been having that happen to me a lot more uh, with the animations, and I'm not honestly sure exactly why. But it is what it is. We just keep fighting. We just trust the system that it will eventually come to fruition for us. Now, I want to talk a little bit about that today um, in terms of just systems thinking versus um, just kind of how we are default thinking. So if you think about it, what does a system actually mean? I was actually reading this book kind of started reading it again. It's called Atomic Habits. It's by James Clear. It's one of the best books ever written. And basically the whole idea of the book or the whole principle behind the book is your habits are kind of like your compound interest of self-improvement. So essentially what he kind of argues in the book is that the habit is the key to everything. And there's this quote in the book that I really like. It talks about you don't rise to the level of your aspirations or you don't rise to the level of your, your goals. You fall to the level of your systems. And so really what he tries to talk about is to take a systematic approach to your life. And so, for example, let's talk about he uses this analogy that I kind of want to talk about today in the analogy. And I think it really applies to Madden players is he talks about a coach for a coach of a football team or a coach of any sports team in general. The goal is to win the championship. But the habit or the system is the collection of practices in which you, uh, you uh, pursue improvement and pursue that goal. I'm actually going to pull that up on my computer here and uh, so that I can actually give you the actual quote that he uses specifically in relation to a sport or uh, like in our context, this would apply to Madden for sure. And this has kind of got me thinking a little bit about Madden in general, how we go about structuring our game plans, how we go about structuring our eBooks, how we go about structuring how I even teach Madden in general. Is there a more systematic approach? Is there a more effective, efficient way to be able to teach this game uh, to you guys? It's been something that I've been kind of wondering. Let's see if CJ Th Stroud can make this throw. Got an inaccurate, honestly, my fault. Okay, so here you go. If you're a coach, your goal is to win a championship. Your system is what your team does at practice every single day, all right? So uh, one of the things that also kind of pairs with that or matches with that really nicely is Mike Leach. Uh, rest in peace to him. But basically, Mike Leach, when he was the coach of Washington State, he was quoted, and he said, uh, the most important thing that we do as a team is we practice. The most important thing that I think anybody does is practice. 
And he was kind of getting at the same basic theory. And it's something that I wanted to talk about with you guys today is, is it possible if you completely ignore your goals and focus only on your system, would you still get the same result? Bill Walsh is famous for saying, you know, the score takes care of itself. If you do the right things over time, then the score will take care of itself. And so I think you can actually apply that principle to Madden in a lot of ways. So for example, you might say, uh, well, okay, what's a system in Madden? Well, a system in Madden is essentially just the collection of plays that you run and why you run them and why you don't. And I've talked a little bit about this before, but I think in general, there are only a couple of things that somebody can actually do to counter the meta, if you think about it. So in, in terms of Madden, there's always a meta. And a meta is, in, in general, just the most popular way to play the game. So there's a meta offense, there's a meta defense. This year's game, the meta offense is bunch offset out of Colts to bunch strong nasty out of Colts, maybe some trips tied in and some uh, and some RPOs. Okay, that's kind of the mainstream. Great tackle by Bo Jackson. Way to lay it all on the line for your squad, buddy. That's kind of the mainstream way to play this game. Now, on defense, there is a clear-cut meta. It's dollar or it's 4-3, even 6-1. Now, there are also, within actual formations that you choose, there is the meta or there is a meta way to run that. For example, the most meta blitz in this game, or at least it should be because it's the best blitz in this game, is what you're seeing me do out of free safety zone blitz. I back off the right side corner every single time. I'm going to put the safety in a hook curl. I'm going to shade out, shade underneath. This is the meta defense uh, in this game. It's the simplest defense, and they are going to have to do very specific things to be able to attack this defense. Okay, That is the important thing that I want to get across. They're going to have to do very specific things um, to actually attack this defense and be able to beat it consistently. The key word is consistently. Okay, You can every now and then just happen to beat something, right? His first drive was kind of like that where he just kind of happened to kind of get the ball down the field. You really there, but, but there wasn't like a systematic, like, okay, he actually knows what he's doing and how to beat this defense. It was more so just, he happened to call some good plays. There's a difference between that. And I think that difference is really what you see at the top levels of Madden is they actually understand the systematic approach to the game and why things work the way they work and why if they are doing this, then you can do this. And there is actually a level of specific intentionality to that. So the question that I want to propose to the chat or the propose to you guys watching this on YouTube is what would you, how, how can you be systematic in your approach to playing Madden? How can you make Madden more systematic? What is your approach to creating systems in Madden? What are your thoughts in general on this topic? Anything like that, anything that kind of strikes you, how can you go about making Madden more systematic? This is something that I've actually thought a lot about um, as I just continue to give up kick returns. Next time we'll kick the ball to the left side of the field. So for example, and this is a, a, a really actually a very simple, when I first started playing Madden, one of the things that you would do, and this was back in Madden, I want to say it was 13, but it, I might have even, I'm pretty sure it was Madden 13. So at Madden 13, I know for sure it was Madden 25 on current gen back when back in the day. But on those Maddens, what you could do to prevent kick returns is you could basically come out and you would squib kick to prevent the kick returns. And if you squib squib kicked it's very it was very difficult to get a kick return for a touchdown and there was even chances where you could actually pick up the fumble so if you were playing and you wanted to play you know good try to win the game you would pretty much squib kick every single time and it was a that would be an example to me of a systematic approach of we're trying to prevent we're trying to prevent them from scoring a touchdown when they get the kick return, right? So the system by which we're going to do that is we're going to squib kick every single time. Or, I mean, even there's been Maddens where people like to quit, uh, to kick the ball out of bounds, um, you know, stuff like that. So uh, how can we make more, you know, make Madden more of a systematic approach? I think that's an interesting question to explore, at least as a thought experiment. And how can you make your approach to Madden uh, a little bit more systematic? One of the things that I think is super slept on and doesn't get enough talked about, especially when we're talking about offense, is how to actually read the defense post-snap and also like how to identify what are they actually going to be able to do that is going to stop your play or your money play or your base play or your power play. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in just a second. 
but there's typically going to be a specific set of adjustments that they're going to have to do. They're going to have to, you know, do certain types of zones combined with certain types of man ups. Those are all factors um, that are going to contribute to that. Okay. So again, they're going to have to put certain things in to their defense to get certain things out of their coverage, uh, which is super, super important to think about. I've taught this for a long time in Madden when I did a deep dive into this back when I was first starting out. There is a simple uh, progression, if you think about it from a Madden perspective, and if you really think about this, it's actually taken from a real-life coach. Uh, one of my favorite coaches of all time is Vince Lombardi. Vince Lombardi uh, is, is a lot of people consider him the best coach ever to coach in the NFL. Um, there's a reason the Super Bowl trophy is named the Lombardi Trophy because that's, I mean, he, that's just his impact on the game, right? So uh, Vince Lombardi, when he was coaching, one of the things that he was famous for was there's this quote. You can actually go look it up on the NFL uh, on the NFL YouTube channel. I'm sure they have it, but it's basically him talking about a a play, and he's on the blackboard. He's teaching them a play that they they want to learn, and the play is the Lombardi sweep. And he says to his team, he says, this is the most important play that we have. This is the play that we must make go. This is the play that we will make go. This is the play that we are going to run again and again and again. And so for Lombardi, they committed to mastery of one play, and that was the Lombardi power sweep. It was famous, and it literally was a dominant play. Now, in and of itself, the play was rather simple. It was a simple power sweep. It was a. It was really designed, honestly, to get just a couple of yards here and there. Um, it was designed to be a consistent, you know, three to five yard yard gaining play for their offense. But through the commitment to mastery of the play, and and you actually would hear coaches talk talk about this. Lombardi would talk about this play more than anything else that he would talk about related to football. It was truly um, like his favorite thing to talk about in, in the context of football. And so he would spend hours teaching people this play and explaining the little nuances of the play. And so that's that's what I would say is like true mastery of something where you can truly break down every single element of it, why it is what it is. That to me is true mastery. Well, uh, fast forward, if you watch the Packers, one of the things that the power sweep did was it honestly uh, was kind of par par in part the reason why uh, Tom Landry played defense a specific way, he invented the 4 3 flex defense. That defense was designed to kind of contain the run uh, back in those days. Now, it was actually invented before uh, Lombardi and Landry were co coaching on different teams, but you have to remember Lombardi coached, he was the offensive coordinator of the Giants. And Tom Landry was a defensive coordinator of the Giants. Uh, and and I, wanna, I can't remember exactly what year, uh, but it was when they were really good. And the important thing to note about that is, so what did Tom Landry face every single day? He faced the Lombardi sweep. And what did Lombardi face every, play, every single day? He faced the, the, the Landry 4-3 uh, flex defense. Fast forward, where they're both coaching both of their teams individually, there was little things that the 4-3 flex defense would leave vulnerable in, the, in their attempt to contain the Lombardi sweep. One of those things was the counterplay. So the way that I've always framed this up to people um, that I like to, when I, when I teach Madden and when I tell people kind of a simple framework for understanding the game, it is essentially a power counter constraint those are the three buckets in which you can put plays in. Your play is either a power play, your play is either a counter play on the power play, or it is a constraint theory play. If it doesn't fit into one of those three buckets, in my opinion, it is random and there's no intentionality behind the play call. You're kind of just doing stuff to do stuff. To me, the reason you don't want to do stuff to do stuff is not because necessarily you want to be boring, but because you have to understand that mass, you can't master everything. Mastery takes a, 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 a exceptional amount of concentration and focus and repetition. Repetition being probably the most important thing in Madden because most of what Madden is at a certain point is execution, muscle memory. Those are some of the key things. Um, you know, when we talk about the game of Madden. So anyways, that being said, they were able to kind of use that simple framework. So an example within the Lombardi offense of this, a power play would be like their power sweep, the play they commit to, the play they run, you know, the majority of the time. I mean, they could literally run this play against any defense. It could be, it could be executed at a high level against any defense 
at all. They have rules, and there's a very, very uh, select few things. Oh, oh, I didn't pass like enough to the left. Um, there's a very select few things that they can actually do to slow this down or stop this, right? That's the power play. In Madden, this would be double post. This would be double corner. This would be some of the best passing concepts. Last year would have been tight slots halfback week with the play flood. Um, okay, so so those are examples of some some power plays. And there's oftentimes in a Madden cycle, especially especially the last couple of years, there's multiple power plays. It's just it's honestly up to you what you commit to mastering yourself. That um, in and of itself is is kind of part of the exercises. You have to commit to mastering something and then being able to have solutions. I don't know why you throw that. Um, to have solutions and if this then answers to questions. So, okay. So all that to be said, they would run the power sweep. That would be their power play. Then they would run either the trap or the counter. That would typically be, or even like the fullback dive to a degree. It was kind of like a, a, a fullback trap, uh, what they were in. But, but that play right there, that would be their uh, counter play. Okay. So that would be their counter play, meaning when the defense over pursued, this is important to note, uh, but when the defense over pursued to defending their power play, they had a play that they could call that would take advantage of the over pursuit of the defense. Okay. So the power sweep would go right, the counter would either go up the middle or left. Kind of, again, very simple framework but very uh, important for understanding the next layer of the scheme. And that is constraint plays. Now, constraint plays, oftentimes, um, this is just something I came across an article back early on when I was doing YouTube. And this was, uh, I believe it was a smart football article uh, by Chris, Chris Brown. And he was talking about, I'm trying, I don't remember for sure, but I'm pretty sure he was talking about the Colts offense in the early 2000s. Uh, but, or in the 2000s when Peyton Manning was at the helm and they were just an absolute amazing offense. They had a power play. Their power play was the levels concept uh, because that was just a simple yard gainer and they just literally could run that and it could just beat everything in the game. Simple high-low read. They would then off of that levels play go into their smash concept or their China concept and that that play is kind of like their power or their counter play. It's a play that looks like exactly like your power play, right? But it goes in the complete opposite direction and it takes advantage of, of defenses that are overextending themselves to try uh, to, to defend your power play, right? Okay, so that, that's part of it. But then there was this third category and, and Lombardi would do this as well in which there's these constraint theory plays. What a constraint theory play basically is is it's a play that is designed to take advantage of a defense that has essentially, in Madden terms, we would say they over-adjusted. Uh, it, it's kind of like a, an example of this in, in the Madden world would be audibly the trips tight in offset week and running an RPO screen. Um, an example of this in the Madden world would be calling the play verticals, have, uh, verticals out of bunch offset. If, if your power play was double post, let's say your counter play was curl flat corner where you're throwing the corner routes. Um, and then maybe your constraint theory play could be verticals because it's a, it's a little different style uh, of route combination, right? For the Colts, constraint theory plays were some of their vertical passing game. That's where they would get in like three verticals or the deep play action cross concept that they would run where they would have a crossing route and then a post underneath it. Some of their deeper plays. And essentially what you're doing is you're taking advantage of the fact that the defense is getting overtly aggressive to try to stop you. Um, they're starting to blitz more or they're starting to play more underneath style of coverages. Those are all ways that a defense can um, over adjust. Right. So that's kind of the, the, the fundamental like perspective Lombardi, what they would do, the Packers, they would run um, basically play action pass. You would saw and you saw this in the Super Bowl. If you go back and watch any highlights of the first couple of Super Bowls, you'll find that I believe um, what was his name? Uh, I can't, I, I'm going to butcher his name it was like boy dollar or something like that. I, I can't remember his name, but the receiver um, and essentially it was a play action pass with a, with a post route or a, a deep slant route. And the purpose of that was to take advantage of the fact that the safeties were coming down into the box and the safeties were trying to get over aggressive and really play the run, which would then leave the entire deep middle of the field wide open in which they would use a play action pass to be able to attack it. So that is a very 
kind of simple explanation um, uh, and w- and providing real NFL, real world examples of power counter constraint. Now, you can have multiple constraint plays, multiple counter plays. I feel like, honestly, you can only truly have like one power play, maybe two in Madden. Uh, and that's because you have to commit to this play. It has to be a it has to be a, a key play, a play that you just truly commit to, that you master, that you understand like the why behind the what. And and that that to me is very important about the power play. That's what most people get wrong about the power play. And what I have found over the over the years playing this game as much as I've played it and thinking about this game as much as I can as I have think thought about it, as you can obviously imagine. One of the things that has has continued to become very clear um, as I can uh, not throw another pick on that. All right. I can't throw that. That's crazy. I didn't know he could do that. I've thrown that play a lot. I've never thrown a pick in man coverage like that on that. I I think that's because I'm not throwing it uh, horizontal enough. But after thinking about this game a lot and, and, and really, you know, kind of labbing a lot and just seeing like what works at the highest levels too. Um, just, just watching a lot of film and stuff like that. One of the things you kind of come to the conclusion on is most comp offenses, like real top tier comp offenses, they're probably majoring. I would say they were, they're probably majoring in one to two formations. And that's even a newer thing. Uh, it used to be, I can't believe we threw that. Um, it used to be that they were, majoring in one formation you know but now you kind of get a couple varieties but most comp offenses at the core really rely on about five to eight um, like plays that they've committed to and really really tested and really have good reps with and really have mastered their reads but the key with those five to eight plays is all five of all of those plays fit together within the scheme to do something very intentional and purposeful. To me, that's the foundation of a system. Let me know what you guys thought. How can we make Madden more systematic, especially on defense? I feel like that's some that's a place where I struggle. Let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching the video, and uh, we'll see you next time.